Liberal Viewer presents. So, welcome to the December 1st edition of Liberal Viewer Sunday Live Clip Roundup. Thanks for joining me. Give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you like what I'm doing here. Uh, tonight, I picked out the weekend's 10 best, most newsworthy clips from the Sunday morning news analysis shows on the big five corporate outlets of ABC, NBC, CBS, CNN, and Fox News, the so-called corporate media here in the United States, for which it'd be a really informative, educational, fair use, media criticism, and political commentary show for you all tonight. Uh, down in the video description, actually for the live show, I didn't have time to put it down there because uh, I've been dealing with, uh, there was a power outage today, uh, there was canceled flights for family members that had me spending part of my day in a Greyhound bus station, so I apologize that I kept delaying the show. And that, uh, But for recorded show viewers, you will have the clip list down there of my 10 uh, clips. Uh, and impeachment is again the main topic I'm covering, and uh, you can see I have here my Impeach Trump t-shirt. Uh, I've sent out over a dozen of these to fans in the US, Canada, and Europe. It's a $15 direct PayPal contribution for US, down at a link in the video description, or $25 to Canada, $30 to Europe, or at the $15 level, you can join at, on Patreon, uh, just a membership. Or there's a join button that only one person's ever used to, to become a YouTube channel member. I've gotten all that out of the way, and so I can explain why impeachment, why this is the month that Trump is going to be impeached, uh, December 2019 is almost certainly the month that President Trump will be impeached because of the evidence of his scheme to pressure Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky to investigate Joe Biden, Hunter Biden, and the CrowdStrike 2016 DNC server conspiracy theory. And he did that while holding up military aid to the Ukraine and an Oval Office visit and other signs of support of the new, new Ukrainian president. And that, among other things, is soliciting a bribe, which is something of value for an official act. And, of course, bribery in, in your, if you are following along in your constitution, bribery is a, uh, one, a treason, bribery, and high crimes and misdemeanors. Uh, if you go to... Uh, Article 1, Section 4 of your Constitution, you will find that is the reason for uh, the Congress that to, yeah, Article 1, Section 4, uh, I'm sorry, Article 2, Section 4, uh, President, Vice President, and all civil officers of the United States shall be removed from office on impeachment for and conviction of treason, bribery, or other high crimes and misdemeanors, Article 2, Section 4, and that's what's getting Trump in trouble, uh, and I will have many news clips on that topic. Uh, but first, I don't have political comedy from uh, Real Time with Bill Maher or SN uh, Saturday Night Live this week, but I did find something a little bit odd uh, in Trump's pardoning of these war criminals. First, I used like this internet meme to respond to Trump when he tweeted about his pardoning of these war criminals. He said this thing, I will always protect our great war fighters, I've got your backs, and you can, if you follow me on Twitter, you may have seen, I think you misspelled war criminals, but uh, this was a discussion on AM Joy this morning, and this is the only coverage I'm going to do of the whole, that would have been like a whole scandal in any other presidency, that the guy pardoned multiple war criminals, and on AM Joy they were talking about how... Uh, Part of it is uh, a part of white supremacy, where uh, and you'll see the tail end of what Joy Reid is saying that it has to, you know, when war crimes against brown people aren't, uh, you know, it's important not to enforce those as war crimes because brown people are the other and not worth protecting according to white supremacy. And uh, when doing that, they, you know, the Trump Navy secretary resigned over this and published an op-ed that they uh, took a quote from Richard Spencer, the Navy secretary in the Washington Post, but they show this picture of a different Richard Spencer. That was like the weird thing that happened on AM Joy, and here is AM Joy, or Joy Reid on AM Joy apologizing and making correction, and you can see she's actually talking about white supremacy in the beginning of this clip, 
over here. to sort of tout him and use his sort of mercy toward him as a thing uh, to appeal to white conservative voters. Thank you both for being here. I want to make a quick correction. This is a pretty big correction. Uh, earlier in the segment, as we were talking about former Navy Secretary Richard Spencer, we mistakenly showed the wrong image uh, of white supremacist Richard Spencer. Very deeply sorry for that mistake. Uh, we want to thank Malcolm and Naveed for being on the show today, as usual. More aimed after the break. And she had kind of a pain look at the end there, but... Uh... Yeah, that was, uh, I guess it's, it's more bizarre than comedic, but uh, that was kind of a weird thing that happened this morning that I thought I would introduce the show with before I get to the impeachment topic. And I actually have new summaries from all five of the big four uh, of the big five corporate outlets. And uh, I think this week I liked the ABC News news summary the best just because it fit with my topic realizing oh it's sunday december 1st december 2019 this is the month most likely that we are going to impeach trump uh which is something you'll see martha raddatz the co-host of this week with george stephanopoulos i don't know why it's not this week with george stephanopoulos or martha raddatz but maybe it should be and you can tell me what you think while we watch that clip together over here Good morning and welcome to this week. It's been just over a week since those blockbuster impeachment hearings, and tomorrow, Democrats will take another important step in the high-speed, high-stakes impeachment inquiry. The House Intelligence Committee is set to release its report to its members Monday, ahead of the first public hearings in the Judiciary Committee Wednesday. It's the Judiciary Committee which is tasked with drawing up articles of impeachment. They'll hear witness testimony from legal experts and ultimately deliberate what may or may not constitute high crimes and misdemeanors. Trump's legal team has been invited to participate in those proceedings, but as of this morning, has yet to issue a response. For more, let's bring in ABC News Chief Legal Analyst Dan Abrams. And Dan, the Intelligence Committee is producing a report based on their investigation. So I heard you all uh, saying that my mic was making too much noise, and it may be because I, I raised my chair up so that you could see my Impeach Trump t-shirt better, and I put myself closer to the mic, so I actually just raised the mic a little bit. I'm... You can tell me if that solved my mic problem. Uh, but uh, I like the bullet points there from ABC. Like I said, I like the uh, way they made the same point that I wanted to make with my title this week, that, uh, that this is probably the month that Donald Trump will be impeached. Impeach Trump this month, December 2018. Uh, and... Usually I give news summary of the week to NBC News's Meet the Press. Uh, later I'm going to show Chuck Todd do an okay job of cross-examination of, cross of Senator John Kennedy from Louisiana. Uh, I wonder if it was my chair that was making the noise. I don't know. But uh, you can let me know if I fix the, the mic noise problem that you were talking about uh, while we watch the NBC News Meet the Press news summary together which uh, I actually think uh, is pretty extensive. Uh, well, I won't pre-comment. I'll try to post-comment on that while I read your comments while we watch the clip together over here. Good Sunday morning. I uh, hope you've been enjoying your Thanksgiving weekend. With the House Judiciary Committee beginning the formal process of drawing up charges against the president, the White House faces a new deadline. Committee Chairman Jer Gerald Nadler has given President Trump and his lawyers until 5 p.m. on Friday to decide whether to take part at all. Mr. Trump has repeatedly called the impeachment investigation a sham, a scam, and a hoax. The Republican strategy has been to focus on the impeachment process, delegitimize it, and scare newly elected House Democrats in swing districts into voting against impeachment. Delegitimizing the process also makes it easier for many Republican senators, like John Kennedy of Louisiana, perhaps, who'll join me in a moment, to vote to acquit the president in an impeachment trial. Now, Republicans are quick to point out that weeks of impeachment hearings have not increased the public's appetite for impeachment. And while that's true, it's also hard to argue that having roughly 50% of the voters wanting you removed from office immediately is where any president wants to be right now as well. 
So to use a football term, President Trump and Republicans have beaten the spread on surviving the initial political fallout of all this, but they're a long way away from winning the game. I said to the president, if you have any information that is exculpatory, please bring it forward. With that next hearing scheduled for Wednesday and new reporting that the president knew about a whistleblower complaint before he released aid to Ukraine, President Trump and his allies are attempting to turn up the political pressure on Democrats. You see what's happening in the polls? Everybody said, that's really bullshit. Republican groups have spent nearly $7 million on ads against impeachment since Pelosi announced the inquiry in September, compared to just over $2.8 million on pro-impeachment ads by Democratic groups, almost entirely money spent by Tom Steyer, and mostly in support of his own campaign. Most of that money is targeting new Democratic House members in swing districts. Their partisan impeachment is a politically motivated charade. They promise to be different, but they're not. So far, public opinion remains split along partisan lines. In a CNN poll, 50% of adults support impeachment, 43% do not. Numbers unchanged from a month ago. Quinnipiac has similar numbers. 45% of voters think President Trump should be impeached, 48% do not. Also, little change from October. Just 13% of voters say they might change their minds. Still, that remains a critical slice of the electorate, and vulnerable Democrats are carefully weighing how to talk about impeachment and likely later this month how to vote on it. And run for Congress to impeach a president. Uh, there's, there's no question. I didn't run for the seat to impeach the president. Go back and check my 18 months of running for this office. There's nothing in there about that. This is not why I ran. I ran to serve. Republicans in toss-up Senate seats are also wary of weighing in. Protesters gathered at all six of Senator Collins's main offices on Tuesday. Just as you wouldn't want a juror to go into a case prejudging it and not being familiar with all of the evidence, I feel very strongly about that. A Senate trial could also scramble the 2020 calendar, requiring the six senators running for president to return to Washington after the December holidays. We'll take it up because we have no choice. How long we're on it will be determined by the majority of the Senate. And while 2020 Democrats support impeachment, they are not enthusiastic about campaigning on it. The question is not first and foremost, what about impeachment? Out here on the trail, our job is to talk to voters about how their lives are going to be impacted by who's sitting in the White House. Every moment we're talking about impeaching Donald Trump or Donald Trump in any context, we are not creating a positive vision for the country. And joining me now is Democratic presidential candidate, Senator Amy Klobuchar of Minnesota. Senator Klobuchar, welcome. <laughs> and, uh, I, Amy Klobuchar was on a couple different shows. I didn't take any clips of Amy Klobuchar, but down in the video description, you can find a link to uh, This Week with George Stephanopoulos. No, I'm sorry. Uh, CNN State of the Union and NBC News' Meet the Press, which were the two shows that she appeared on. And I realized I mixed up because while I was watching that clip uh, with you, uh, I went and I got my clip list. And I realize now that it's actually CNN that uh, I thought should have won this week for saying that this is the month that we're going to impeach Trump. And uh, because the state of the, well, Jake Tapper wasn't there this week, but the state of our union this week is gearing up for the month that we are most likely going to impeach Trump. And I will talk about that news summary with you after we watch it together. Much less extensive, much less context than you got from Chuck Todd, uh, but also a quarter of the length, pretty much. And I will talk about it with you after we watch together over here. Hello, I'm Dana Bash in for Jake Tapper in Washington, where the State of Our Union is gearing up. Today is the first day of a month that could define the Trump presidency. And we're heading into a critical week as the impeachment inquiry moves into a new phase. Tomorrow, members of the House Intelligence Committee are expected to review its impeachment report before it goes to a vote on Tuesday, according to a committee official. The report will then be delivered to the Judiciary Committee ahead of its first impeachment hearing on Wednesday. While Democratic lawmakers spent their holiday preparing for a potential impeachment, President Trump spent his holiday avoiding it, celebrating Thanksgiving with a surprise visit to U.S. troops in Afghanistan and preparing to travel to London 
to mark the 70th anniversary of NATO. All while the president and his legal team are facing a deadline of Friday at 5 p.m. to decide whether they will mount a defense before the House Judiciary Committee. Joining me now is 2020 presidential candidate Senator Amy Klobuchar of Minnesota. Oh, and I saw I was getting some thanks for uh, not including Amy Klobuchar. You can see Amy Klobuchar did uh, also talk to uh, Dana Bash on CNN State of the Union. Uh, and now I'm going to show you the shortest news summary, but still has information that you won't get from the Fox News Sunday news summary, which is the most biased news summary. And I, <clears throat> one of the reasons I like to show you these other four is because it's like an alternative universe sometimes compared to what they're talking about on Fox News Sunday. Uh, and here, John Dickerson was in for Margaret Brennan on Face the Nation. I'll show that uh, 40 second news summary and talk about it with you after we watch together over here. And welcome to Face the Nation. Margaret is off today. The House Intelligence Committee announced last night that their impeachment inquiry report will be ready tomorrow. Then Tuesday, the full committee will vote on whether or not to proceed to the next step, which is asking the Judiciary Committee to look at writing articles of impeachment against President Trump. We will discuss those developments, but we're also going to try to step back a little today to reflect on presidents and partisanship and the pace of an age where one development follows quickly on the heels of another. We will, be, we will begin, though, with campaign 2020. New Jersey Senator Cory Booker is one of the Democrats trying to win his party's nomination. Oh, no Cory Booker. Not giving you any Cory Booker either. Um, I'm trying to stick to the, the newsmakers on impeachment uh, that have the most important things to say. I actually only have, uh, what is it, one, two, three, four newsmaker clips after the news summaries. Three Republicans and a Democrat. Uh, but uh, speaking of three Republicans, that's maybe that should be the what three Republicans and a Democrat. That's kind of the way they do panels on Fox News. So it reminds me of the Fox News Sunday news summary I'm about to show you. Now, I guess John Dickerson didn't really uh, have time to tell you what the whole impeachment thing was about in the 42nd thing that and that's the only CBS News Face the Nation clip I'm going to show you. They did discuss impeachment in greater detail with their punditry and I don't like to comment on the commenters uh, but uh, I mean I'm basically what impeachment is about and what is not mentioned in the much longer Fox News Sunday news summary you're about to see which is all about the process uh, they don't say that you know Trump tried to pressure the president of Ukraine to uh, investigate his political rival and this crowd strike conspiracy theory in exchange for getting the military aid and an Oval Office visit and you know he uh, got rid of you know uh, higher level officials uh, going to his inauguration as just uh, the energy secretary who oops can't remember uh, the <laughs> no it's uh, you know the former governor of Texas who couldn't remember the energy department when he was running anyway that was kind of a joke but uh, anyway you'll see that the Fox News uh, news summary does not talk about why it is that President Trump is getting impeached even though it goes on for almost two and a half minutes uh, but it's all about the process and you notice it both starts and ends with trying to make Trump look presidential and even by the end you'll see Kevin Cork explicitly makes the argument that Trump is out there you know meeting with you know he's going to London he was just in Afghanistan visiting the troops you saw that in some of the previous news summaries but they start and end with that on Fox News Sunday and they also talk about uh, the London meeting with NATO and uh, the uh, suspected terrorism in London and the Netherlands and all these important things are going on and Democrats are just being ridiculous, uh, according to critics or whatever it is in this Fox News summary that I will talk about with you a little more after we watch the final of the five news summaries. And of course, the most biased from the alternative universe of Fox News over here. 
And hello again from Fox News in Washington. President Trump returns to the White House after a surprise trip to Afghanistan and some golf in Florida. And right away, he faces tough choices. He must decide whether to send lawyers to participate in impeachment hearings conducted by the House Judiciary Committee. Meanwhile, Democrats on the Intel Committee will deliver their report, making the case to impeach a president for the third time in American history. In a moment, we'll talk with two members of the Judiciary Committee, Republican Congressman Doug Collins and Democrat Hakeem Jeffries. But first, let's get the latest from Kevin Cork, live from the president's Florida retreat at Mar-a-Lago. Kevin. Chris, for the president, there will be scant time to reflect on the Thanksgiving holiday as his administration now braces for the next phase of the impeachment inquiry. In a letter to the president, Chairman Nadler issued a Friday deadline for the White House to declare whether counsel intends to participate in the hearings and to specify if counsel will cross-examine witnesses or present evidence. That's two days after lawmakers expect to hear testimony from four scholars on the constitutional grounds for impeachment, a process already being criticized by ranking member Doug Collins, who wrote the committee asking that the witness list be expanded, noting that it's less than a quarter of those called to testify during the Clinton impeachment. Collins's letter is just the latest example of the political and process tug of war playing out on Capitol Hill as the inquiry shifts to the Judiciary Committee from the Intelligence Committee, whose members will be able to review a draft of their impeachment report on Monday before voting to forward their findings on to Chairman Nadler Tuesday. For President Trump, the resumption of the hearings might seem a cold reality following a warm welcome by U.S. service personnel during his surprise visit to Afghanistan on Thanksgiving, a brief respite from the war on terror to visit with the commander-in-chief, and just ahead of his trip to the NATO summit in London, where two were killed and three were injured in an ISIS-claimed attack on Friday. Speaking of that trip to London, the president said on Twitter he'll be there representing our country, while Democrats will be back here conducting the most, quote, ridiculous impeachment in history. Chris. Kevin Cork reporting from Mar-a-Lago. Kevin, thank you. So I don't know. What do you think? Do you th uh, a lot of times when I watch the Fox News Sunday news summaries, uh, it seems like they could have almost been written by someone like Stephanie Grisham, the press secretary who never appears anywhere except on Fox News for the Trump administration. And... Uh, like I said, you never heard what Trump was getting impeached about. It was all about process, and of course it started and ended with him being presidential in the war zone and at NATO and the ridiculousness of Congress while these important things, well, whatever. I said, I, I pre-criticized that clip before I showed it. I think I that the clip supported what I said, and you can let me know what you think down in the comment section. I was reading your comments along the way, and uh, I appreciate... Uh, you're adding to the commentary on the clips and now we're getting from the news summaries over to the newsmaker clips uh if you remember last week i showed you a clip of senator john kennedy uh on fox news sunday where chris wallace actually did a little bit of cross-examination of him on he seemed to subscribe to this you know maybe the ukrainians hacked the dnc server the whole crowd strike conspiracy theory and he said you know you don't know and i don't know nobody knows and then later in the week he said oh uh, uh, that's not true and you'll see here he says he missed her he misheard chris wallace's question but now he uh, ha has all new republican talking points uh where he first he says uh that you know there are these ukrainian officials who wrote op-eds during the 2016 election when a, they thought Hillary Clinton was going to win, just like everybody else did. And uh, B, they didn't like Trump because he had said things about how the invasion of the Ukraine by Russia and the annexation of Crimea were, you know, oh, we should probably just let that be okay. Uh, Trump had said those things, and uh, that's what the op-eds were about from these officials. And then the other thing that you'll see John Kennedy try to equate with Russian uh, hacking of the DNC server and then distributing it through WikiLeaks with the coordination with the Trump campaign through Roger Stone, that is 
the Russia collusion that is, you know, no collusion, no collusion. No, there actually was collusion, but I don't want to get into that at this point. But I do want to uh, talk a little more about how Chuck Todd does an okay job of, you know, asking John Kennedy, the Republican senator from Louisiana, if he's you know, being a useful idiot, a dupe for Putin. He, there's a little bit of Putin cross-examination here that I do think is good, but he doesn't really cross-examine him about this uh, idea that a Ukrainian court in December 2018 found that Ukrainian officials did meddle in the 2016 election, which was revealing that Paul Manafort was totally corrupt. And uh, the thing that Chuck Todd never says is that uh, that district court decision was overturned by a higher court. Uh, and uh, anyway, I'll talk about all of that a little more after you watch this longest clip for the program. Chuck Todd trying to cross-examine a, I don't know, a useful idiot for Putin's Russia. You tell me what you think while we watch John Kennedy being cross-examined by Chuck Todd on NBC News' Meet the Press this morning over here. Thank you, Chuck. Um, you appeared on a, uh, a show last Sunday, and you walked back uh, a comment that you made there. Can you explain what you, what you misstated and what you wanted to fix, what part of the record you wanted to correct? Sure. I, I walked it back because I was wrong. Um, About Chris what? Wallace was interviewing me. I'm sorry? About what? What were you wrong about? Uh, well, um, Chris Wallace was interviewing me, and uh, he asked me a question. I answered it. I thought he had asked me if Ukraine had meddled in the 2016 election. Uh, he didn't. He asked me if Ukraine was responsible for hacking mm -hmm. the DC, DNC computer, which is, of course, a form of meddling. I went back and looked at the transcript, and I realized Chris was, uh, was right and I was wrong, so I said I was wrong. The, um, the issue of conflating what Ukraine did and what Russia did has, has been, I think, at the heart of some of the criticism you've received. Michael Gerson, who's no liberal columnist in the Washington Post, um, certainly not a fan of President Trump either, I, I, I'll grant you that. But here's what he wrote about your appearance. He said this, politicians such as Kennedy must know the truth about Russia aggression, but still they choose to suck up to the president by reflecting his mania and sharing his blind spots. Loyalty to Trump among Republicans has proved by the loosening of all other loyalties to truth, to honesty, and to the national good. By this measure, Kennedy is profoundly loyal to the president. Simply uttering this conflation on Ukraine and Russia, the inference is you're doing the president's dirty work here. Do you accept that criticism? Well, I, listen, I, I like Michael Gerson. I, I haven't met him, but I know he's a smart guy, and I read his, his columns now and again. Uh, game. Uh, I disagree with him. Um, I think both Russia and Ukraine meddled in the 2016 election. Uh, I think it's been well documented in the Financial Times, in Politico, in The Economist, in The Washington Examiner, even on CBS, that the uh, Prime Minister of Ukraine, the Interior Minister, the Ukrainian Ambassador to the United States, the head of the Ukrainian Anti-Corruption uh, um, League uh, all meddled in the election on social media and otherwise. They worked with a DNC operative Did you, um, uh, against wait, the president. Uh, uh, right, in fact, me, can, okay. I, can I make one more point, Chuck? Sure. Can I wait one more point? Yeah. In fact, in December of 2018, a Ukrainian court ruled that Ukrainian officials had violated Ukrainian law Mm. By uh, by meddling in our election, and that was reported in I, the New York Times. Were you now? Is were there you, is there meddling? Yeah. I'm sorry. No, no, no. Were you, were you briefed ahead. by the intelligence? According to the New York Times a couple of weeks ago, U.S. senators were mm -hmm. briefed after Fiona Hill's testimony that that actually this entire effort to frame Ukraine for the Russian meddling of 2016, of which you you just made this case that they've done it that actually this is an effort of Russia propaganda, that this is a Russian intelligence um, a propaganda campaign in order to get people like you to say these things about Ukraine. Mm -hmm. They're trying to frame Ukraine. You apparently were briefed about this. Um, 
uh, uh, in the United States Senate by intelligence officials. Are you at all concerned you're doing Russian intelligence work here? I was not briefed. You didn't attend um, that briefing? And, and listen, Dr. You didn't attend the no, briefing on that? And Dr. Okay. I wasn't briefed. Um, Dr. Hill is entitled to her opinion. But when, when, a, when the economy when, magazine... when does opinion become fact? It, does 17 intelligence services saying it? Does every Western intelligence ally saying Russia did this? I, I'm just sort of confused. At what point is it no longer an opinion for you? I don't think it's an opinion. I think it's a, pa a fact. I believe the reporting by the political magazine. You just I said Fiona Hill. By the you just said Fiona Hill gave an opinion. I believe the report. I believe the reporting by the Financial Times. I believe the reporting by the Washington Examiner. Uh, you should read the articles, Chuck. They're very well documented, and I believe that a Ukrainian district court in December of 2018. Mm. Uh, slapped down several UK, Ukrainian officials for meddling in our election as a violation of Ukrainian law. Now, I didn't report those facts. Reputable journalists reported those facts. Does that mean that, they, that Ukrainian, the Ukrainian uh, leaders were more aggressive than Russia? No, Russia was very aggressive and they're much more sophisticated. But the fact that Russia was so aggressive does not exclude the fact that President Poroshenko yeah. uh, actively worked for Secretary Clinton. Now, if I'm wrong and if actively all these journalists worked for Secretary, are wrong, I mean, my goodness, wait a minute, Senator Kennedy, you now have the president of Ukraine saying he actively worked for the Democratic nominee for president. I mean, now come on. I mean, I got to put up, you realize the only other person selling this argument outside the United States is this man, Vladimir Putin. This is what he said on November 20th. Thank God nobody is accusing us anymore of interfering in U.S. elections. Now they're accusing Ukraine. We'll let them sort this out among themselves. You just accused a former president of Ukraine. You've done exactly what the Russian operation is trying to get American politicians to do. Are you at all concerned that you've been duped? No, because... You just read the articles. Do you believe The Economist magazine is a reputable journal? It's been around, I think, since 1843. They do you think there's much, a difference in criticizing? Conservative. Do you think there's a difference you, in a country believe, criticizing a presidential candidate who essentially endorsed another country's um, invasion and uh, annexation of a part of their country as equivalent to what Russia did with the DNC? Well, let me put it this way, Chuck. Let's suppose, and I don't, look, I don't believe it, but you're right, and I'm wrong. Then what harm would it do to allow the President of the United States, who has a demonstrated record fighting foreign corruption, to introduce evidence? Why doesn't he? he what harm he would has it been, do? He has been That's called, provided, be, he has been provided be, every opportunity to provide... <laughs> That was a pretty long clip, like I said, but uh, and then Chuck Todd goes on to, uh, he, you saw John Kennedy changes the subject to the process and said, you know, says it, you know, it's a, it's as ringed as a carnival ring toss. I almost included, but since it was over six minutes, I didn't want to keep going. And uh, I, I talked about the whole process thing last week, uh, which is kind of a, a bogus argument because. Uh, the House of Representatives just accuses the president of impeachable offenses. That's what impeachment is. And then it goes to the Senate for a trial. The House is basically doing the work of a grand jury. Uh, and if you know how the grand jury system works in the United States, uh, the prosecutor pretty much controls the grand jury. That's why they say a grand jury would indict a ham, a ham sandwich because an indictment is just an accusation, just like impeachment is just an accusation. And in the grand jury, uh, the defense, the accused, actually doesn't get to present witnesses, doesn't get to, sometimes they call the defendant and then the defendant can go outside the grand jury and talk to his lawyer and come back in, but, uh, the defendant has the accused has very little control over what happens in the accusatory process it's when it goes to trial that you get more due process rights and that will happen in the senate and you saw chuck todd you know kind of 
tried to bring that up and he did a somewhat okay job of pointing out that uh, Ukrainian officials criticizing Trump during the 2016 election when he basically said Russia should be able to keep Crimea uh, and profit from their invasion of Ukraine that I mean is that the same kind of meddling as Russia hacking the DNC server and uh, then distributing the hacked emails through WikiLeaks and also having this whole social media disinformation campaign that was all outlined in great detail in the Mueller report at a link down in the video description if you really want to read it. I mean, it's not comparable and Chuck Todd, I don't think cross-examined uh, as well as he could have even on those points and then he never cross-examined John Kennedy on that whole like Back in December 2018, the New York Times said that this really low, uh, pretty corrupt Ukrainian court uh, said that uh, releasing bad information about Paul Manafort during the presidential campaign was meddling in the U.S. election, even though that finding was overruled later by a less corrupt Ukrainian court. But anyway... Uh, I want to move on to uh, my next two Republicans. Uh, the first one is uh, over on ABC News's. Wait, uh, sorry, over on uh, Fox News Sunday. Uh, I criticized Fox News Sunday for their news summary earlier where uh, they never mentioned what... Trump was being impeached about well finally uh, when Chris Wallace is cross-examining Republican Doug Collins he shows some clips about what's been uh, said that the president did and uh, asks this Republican Doug Collins from the uh, Intelligence Committee uh, who I think is I guess we'll find out if he's also on the Judiciary Committee, and uh, I'll talk about that clip a little more after we watch Chris Wallace actually bring up what Trump is being impeached about uh, finally on Fox News uh, over here. What do you need to do now? Oh, to simply okay. go ahead. <laughs> okay. Uh, you're pretty wound up, I gotta say. You obviously <laughs> had some turkey this Thanksgiving. Uh, and a little bit about... cranberries as well. Okay. Well, me too. Uh, let's talk about the merits of this. You say there's no basis to impeach the president. I'd like to play some of the key testimony that the House Intel Committee heard the last couple of weeks, uh, basically making allegations or, or stating evidence against the president. Take a look. The meeting President Zelensky wanted was conditioned on the investigations of Burisma and alleged Ukrainian interference in the 2016 U.S. elections. It is improper for the President of the United States to demand a foreign government investigate a U.S. citizen and a political opponent. Mr. Giuliani's requests were a quid pro quo for arranging a White House visit for President Zelensky. Congressman Collins, before we get to the question of whether this is an impeachable offense or not, simply, do you see anything wrong with that? The president conditioning support for Ukraine, whether it was a meeting, whether uh, with, with Zelensky, whether it's military, conditioning support for Ukraine to that country investigating some of the president's political rivals. Well, I think it's interesting that the premise of your question is based on witnesses who agree with your premise. I disagree and say that Mr. Volker, Mr. Morrison, even Mr. Sondland, who presumed it was being conditioned, the president himself told Senator Johnson there was no precondition. There's nothing to be presumed on this. So if you want to show one side, then also show the other side as we go along with this. President Trump has always been concerned about foreign aid. He's always been concerned about what's going on in the Ukraine and, and Europe and how is Europe participating and how our tax dollars. But, the question but, is, the question is, though, if we're looking corruption, does it matter who's involved? That's the problem in the policy issue that got discussed in Intel. He was looking at the corruption part of this, and yes, if they were, if the Bidens were involved, then they would have been a part of that. But the problem is, is there's never a discussion in Intel that we saw, as I just pointed out, several key fact witnesses who actually said there was no conditioning on this. So but, you can put reporters but, but let me, up or not. But let me ask you, if I am sure, because we're about to run no out problem. of time. July 25th phone call uh, where the, between President Trump and President Zelensky, he never mentions 
corruption in Ukraine. He never mentions Burisma. He just mentions investigate two Americans, and he names them, Joe Biden and his son Hunter. Okay. Again, if you look at the call itself, there was an overall discussion, which had been had previously by others in discussion with Ukraine. And also just go back to the fact of the president looks after our tax dollars and the president's looking out for the fact, was there problems there? When we look at this process, we do not see a president who conditioned anything. He just wanted the facts, whether it be 2016 election, whether we were looking at of what was happening, he was looking at the fact of, is there corruption? So I do not spend dollars that I don't need to spend in the Ukraine because of corruption that was still there. Okay, this is just, an issue. Let me just ask you a thought experiment. Just, just bear with me for a minute. Okay. If you believe that the president had used the power of his office to try to get Ukraine to interfere with our elections, if you believe that, would that be an impeachable offense? I do not believe it, so that I'm not going to answer a hypothetical in which is designed to simply say that the president did something improper. Chris, he did nothing improper. There was nothing about a problematic giving aid to another country in which you're talking about corruption, which he's required to do by law. And it just so happened that a, a presidential candidate's son, who was getting in a massive amount of money from a company that had been under investigation, in which even other witnesses that have been fa favorable, quote, to the Democrats in the investigation, have said needed to be looked at. This is a problem of overall proportion, but there's nothing here that the president did wrong. And this is the thing that we're going to move forward on. Okay. Uh, I got one last question. I got a minute for it. Okay. A U.S. Senate seat in Georgia comes open at the end of the year. And Chris Wallace there then starts asking Doug Collins about uh, whether he's going to run for the Senate seat in Georgia. And that's, it, you saw it was pretty weak cross-examination by Chris Wallace. I mean, he, at least at that point in the Fox News Sunday program they showed what trump was being impeached about with those clips from the last couple weeks of hearings but uh when it came time to cross-examine doug collins uh he didn't really uh make much of a dent in those republican talking points the uh, you know about how even though you know he mentioned how in the July 25th call, Trump never mentioned corruption. He only mentioned the Bidens. But then Doug Collins said, well, you know, the Bi just because the Bidens are mentioned, it's still about corruption, but uh, it's just a talking point. There's no real uh, factual basis in the record for it. And it's not in the call. It's not in the testimony. It's just getting worse and worse for Republicans, I think. And uh, the uh, final example I want to show you of a Republican trying to defend the indefensible is from ABC News's This Week with George Stephanopoulos, where Martha Raddatz was questioning a local member of Congress. Uh, you know, I'm in the Sacramento area here, and uh, this is the Republican from... Uh, I used to be a public defender, you know, a criminal defense attorney for people who can't in, afford an attorney, you know, when they, the whole Miranda rights where they say if you can't afford an attorney, one will be appointed for you. Well, I used to be that in the most Republican county in California at the time, Placer County, California, and that's where uh, Representative Tom McClintock uh, is the representative, and uh, you can see he is all mesmerized by the Trump talking points despite Martha Raddatz trying to point out the quid pro quo that is obvious from the, can I, you know, I, I'd like you to do me a favor though, language between Trump and Vladimir uh, Zelensky in the July 25th phone call, uh, which I will talk about with you a little more after we watch that clip together over here. Judicial proceeding. And, and the New York Times also reported this week that the president knew about the whistleblower complaint in August before he released the military aid in early September, which would mean when Trump spoke to Gordon Sondland in September, he was well aware of what was going on. So there, when he said there was no quid pro quo, 
pro quo, he would have to have been aware of that complaint. What's your response to that? Well, the, the, the implication is that this is an admission of guilt because the president found out about the whistleblower complaint and then immediately released the aid. That's not what happened. Uh, 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 several weeks went by before that aid was released. Now, remember, under our Constitution, the president has sole authority to. But he specifically our mentioned affairs. there was no quid He's, pro quo to Sondland exactly in that, right. in that exactly phone right. call. And there, Could he be and, covering and his tracks? And, and among all of the testimony of the hand-picked witnesses that the Democrats have heard for two weeks in public hearings, not one, not one was uh, told that there was a quid pro quo. Uh, the the uh, uh, only conclusions that they came to were supposition and impressions they got reading the New York Times. But remember, the president conducts our foreign policy. He's commanded to take care that the laws be faithfully enforced. Uh, and... Uh, uh, the National Defense Authorization Act, which authorized aid to Ukraine in the first place, requires that the administration determine that that country is taking steps to combat corruption before he releases the aid. As I re read his conversation with uh, Zelensky, that's exactly what he was doing. When, when you defend the president and, and think about these hearings, is there anything in your mind that the president did involving Ukraine that is wrong or that concerns you in any way? Well, he didn't use the delicate language of diplomacy in that conversation. That's true. Uh, he also doesn't use the smarmy talk of politicians. Uh, what you hear from Donald J. Trump is the blunt talk of a Manhattan businessman. He says what he means. He means what he says. Uh, uh, that's the only thing that's remarkable about that, co that conversation. But he was entirely within his constitutional authority and was following the statute that Congress adopted uh, in granting aid to the Ukraine. Okay, we're going to have to leave it there. Thanks so much for joining us this morning. <laughs> so, like I said, one more Republican kind of flailing to defend Trump. And, you know, he must have been flailing when he got to the point where he says Trump means what he says. Does anyone really believe that? Does even Tom McClintock, the Republican from Rockland or wherever he is in Placer County, uh, I find that kind of difficult to believe. I I have to try to change the settings on my final clip here. They Welcome somehow... back to State of the Union. I'm Dana Bash. This week, the House Judiciary Committee will begin considering whether to draft articles of impeachment against President Trump. For one of the Democrats on this committee, this is the third impeachment inquiry she's going to be a part of. Congresswoman Zoe Lofgren worked for three proceedings on them against President Nixon, President Clinton, and now President Trump, and the California Congresswoman joins me now. Wow, that's quite a history you have there. Thank you for joining us today. So you talk about the history there. Of course, you are steeped in it. You are the only member of Congress, as I mentioned, who worked on both the Nixon right. and Clinton impeachments. You even wrote one of the articles of impeachment against Nixon while working <laughs> yes, for, for a Congress uh, member. So the intelligence chairman, Adam Schiff, says President Trump his conduct has been far more serious and beyond anything that Nixon did. You were there. We're seeing pictures of it. Do you agree? Actually, I do agree. The president, uh, President Nixon's uh, misconduct related to trying to use the levers of government to hide. Wow. I, I was trying to, like, fix my clip. Whoa. Sorry about that. I had a little mishap there where I uh, was trying to shrink that clip down and I lost all my control. And uh, But that's the final clip I'm going to show you. Uh, the uh, Democrat, uh, Zoe Lofgren, talking to Dana Bash on CNN State of the Union, uh, where uh, Dana Bash uh, first does this introduction that I think you just saw already. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, and it's filling up the whole screen but uh, maybe this time when I show it to you I can shrink it down uh, and then Zoe Lofgren actually will talk to you about how what Trump is doing now is worse than Watergate from her perspective as being someone who worked on the Watergate articles of impeachment uh, was in Congress during the Clinton impeachment and now is currently on the House Judiciary Committee as you saw in the introduction that just hijacked my 
uh, broadcast and that I'll try to fix for you as you watch it with me together over here. Welcome back to State of the Union. I'm Dan Bash. This week, the House Judiciary Committee will begin considering whether to draft articles of impeachment against President Trump. For one of the okay. And now it's at the right size over Welcome here. Back to State of the Union. I'm Dan Bash. This week, the House Judiciary Committee will begin considering whether to draft articles of impeachment against President Trump. For one of the Democrats on this committee, this is the third impeachment inquiry she's going to be a part of. Congresswoman Zoe Lofgren worked for three proceedings on them against President Nixon, President Clinton, and now President Trump. And the California Congresswoman joins me now. Wow. That's quite a history you have there. Thank you for joining us today. So you talk about the history there. Of course, you are steeped in it. You are the only member of Congress, as I mentioned, who worked on both the Nixon right. and Clinton impeachments. You even wrote one of the articles of impeachment against Nixon while working <laughs> yes, for, for a Congress uh, member. So the Intelligence Chairman Adam Schiff says President Trump his conduct has been far more serious and beyond anything that Nixon did. You were there. We're seeing pictures of it. Do you agree? Actually, I do agree. The president, uh, President Nixon's uh, misconduct related to trying to use the levers of government to hide the Watergate uh, burglary, to, you know, his misconduct had to do with trying to throw the election. But it, at least it didn't involve involving other foreign nations. If you take a look at the what the founding fathers were concerned about, it was the interference by foreign governments in our political system that was one of their gravest concerns. Nixon's behavior didn't fall into that range. So in that way, this this conduct is more serious. So I have to circle back to the what we were talking about a moment ago, which is that you're saying it's more serious than what Nixon did, and yet you're not ready to go there on flatly saying that the articles of, or at least one article, well, I, will pass. Here's what I want to do. I want to let the process play out. Mm -hmm. We're going to have our hearing, then we will have debate that includes uh, all the members of the committee, including the Republican members. We've invited the president or his counsel to appear uh, to provide information. Uh, and let's see this process play out. You know, if we've got it wrong, it doesn't look like we do. But I, I would welcome an opportunity to reach a different conclusion about the president's misconduct. Uh, this is not a great uh, time for the country to have a president revealed as doing something so counterproductive to the national interest. It would be wonderful if there were some benign uh, explanation. I'm struggling to think what it would be at this point, but we have to at least allow for that possibility. And uh, But if the president's behavior is as it appears so far, uh, that is a very serious matter that threatens our constitutional order so let's go back as to, well as our national security. Let's go back to 1998. You railed against Republicans then after President Bill Clinton's right. impeachment. You suggested the Republicans were engaged in a, quote, American fascism, calling it a partisan lynching and a Republican overthrow of government. So if House Democrats do go forward and impeach the, uh, President Trump without any Republican support, would you call that a democratic overthrow of government? Certainly not. My concern with the Clinton impeachment was that there was no high crime or misdemeanor. Uh, lying about sex does not disrupt the constitutional order. It doesn't threaten the national security. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're not pursuing President Trump's lying about sex. I mean, his former lawyer is in prison because he lied about uh, the president's affairs. That has nothing to do with undercutting the constitutional order. If we were pursuing President Trump because of his cover up of his affairs, that would be improper, and mm. we're not going to do so that. Welcome back to State of the Union. I'm Dana Bash. This week, the House Judiciary. Huh. So, see, it was looping there. I Good thing I was watching and cut that off. But uh, I think that uh, Zoe Lofgren there, a uh, Democrat from the San Jose area here in California, much more reasonable than the previous three Republicans I showed. 
Uh, one thing I disagree with her a little bit in the end of that clip you saw, she said that, you know, we're not going after Trump for lying about sex, even though Michael Cohen's in jail for that. Well, Michael Cohen's in jail for committing campaign finance felonies to cover up Trump's affairs right before the election without reporting it as a campaign finance contribution. And he said in his plea, and that was accepted by the prosecutor and the judge, that he was directed to commit those felonies by the president and directing someone to commit a felony under federal law is a felony. And so that means there's substantial evidence Trump committed those felonies and uh, those that's an, an impeachable offense, committing a campaign finance felony, in my opinion, despite what Zoe Lofgren said there. But anyway, that is the final news clip, uh, which, sorry, it, I kind of messed up trying to show it to you. But if you want one of these uh, impeach Trump T-shirts, um, just uh, give me a, if you're in the U.S., a $15 PayPal contribution at the link down in the video description and tell me if you want extra large, large or medium. I still have shirts in all sizes while supplies last. Uh, or you can become one of my monthly patrons on Patreon also at a link down in the video description. Uh, this is the month Trump will be impeached and if you uh, order your shirt this week, uh, you will have it by Christmas, which is right around when Trump's going to get impeached, it seems. And anyway, that is the final news clip. That's the last of my commentary on the clips. Uh, I do have a Dash and Sandy clip for the Dash and Sandy fans out there. Uh, you know, uh, Sandy right now is lying down right over there uh, to my left. And I captured a moment when uh, Dash the cat walked right by Sandy the dog. Dash is long gone because Dash doesn't hang around like Sandy does to listen to the show. But here is the Dash and Sandy clip to finish the show tonight over here. And that's it. Thanks for joining me. Oh, and I also want to thank my uh, Super Chat contributors. Oh, I just saw, I just got a, a new Super Chat contributor at the end there. Let me take a quick uh, screenshot of all the uh, Super Chat contributors uh, and export it as a JPEG here real quick. And then I can import it to my software so I can thank you all here. Here we go. Thank you. I appreciate that financial support and all the ways I already talked about since I don't get much support from YouTube ad revenue anymore. Uh, I might be able to make a video this week about uh, what's upcoming on the Liberal Viewer channel and uh, promoting my different channel memberships that I'm supposed to do to be, you know, to have YouTube channel memberships. I'm supposed to make a video promoting that and this may be the week I have a chance to do it sometime in the next few weeks. Sometime this year, definitely, that will come up and talk about what other upcoming videos I have. But uh, I will be back next Sunday and every Sunday through at least November 2000 uh, and I'll see you uh, when I have my next video to upload or my next Sunday live clip roundup and uh, until then I guess I will be seeing all of you around the internet.